It's been a while. I have missed monsters for a while, but they are mo the back. We're going to be covering a monster today, and we're going to be making a monster as well. For those of you who were hoping to see uh, more monsters and more monster lore, you're going to get that. Uh, I'll be covering a monster from Esper's Emporium of Esoterica. <clears throat> today it is a uh, probably going to take me, say, three or four minutes to actually cover this particular creature or monster. And then we'll go straight into the workshop where we will make the monster lore for our own monster. And I'll do a little bit of a stat block for Dungeons and Dragons 5. It will not be the complete thing. It will just be really just the basic framework for it. Okay, I, I did this last time. I'll do it again. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, great. Stick around. I'm going to put up a poll. Feel free to take part in that poll. Hello, Fred Hoover. Glad to have you. Grab some food, some drink. Make sure you are comfortable. Uh, this will take me just a couple of minutes to go over the monster lore of this um, this creature. And then uh, we'll go straight into the workshop aspect for those of you who are looking forward to that that part of it. Okay, let me get, get ready. <clears throat> Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller and today... I want to talk about the monster lore for the garfish. Now the garfish is a an odd looking creature. Is it a fish? Is it an eel? It is from Esper's Emporium of Esoterica. It is also a monster that is Dungeons and Dragons 5e compatible. I'm going to be covering the monster lore for this thing. Now, from the hidden rocky recesses strikes a predatory fish. Its mouth is a long snout filled with razor sharp teeth and its scaly body is about six feet long. The garfish is an ambush predator that lives primarily in fresh and brackish water, although sometimes they are found in coastal waters. The scales of the garfish are particularly strong and can be used to make something like scale mail armour and arrowheads. While the garfish itself has no venom, its eggs are highly poisonous if consumed. This ensures that other predators don't eat the garfish's eggs and therefore will not eat their young. Carnivorous, the garfish feeds on small fish and other eel-like creatures. The garfish has poor vision and relies on its sense of smell to find food and threats that might be trying to hunt it. By remaining completely still and moving slowly, the garfish is able to sneak up on its prey more effectively. The jaw strength of a garfish is immense due to its hooked teeth and powerful muscles. It is difficult to actually release the bite or grip of the garfish. Outside of a water environment, the garfish can survive by holding its breath for up to two hours. The garfish doesn't have any immunities or resistances and its favorite method of striking and hunting is to go into a small hole in a rock or in a coral reef and wait there for a small fish or other like creature to try to swim in there and of course swim straight down its gullet. Now I hope this was useful and interesting to you. Thank you for watching and listening. Thank you to Esper the Bard who supports me so I can keep doing this sort of thing and thank you to my patrons. I hope this was useful to you and interesting. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s. <clears throat> and that is the garfish. Now, for those of you who are wondering, where did the garfish come from? The garfish is very much a, a creature, I believe, that is based off the, the moray eel. For those of you who are aware of the moray eel, I believe that a lot of the, the concepts behind the, the garfish come from there. It's a very sing, sim, simple creature. It really, I wouldn't say it's a monster. It's more of like a beast, um, something you might use as a sort of a, a basic threat. Maybe it's something you fish for, something maybe you stick your hand in the wrong place and you get one up with a garfish on the other end. Uh, I think that's essentially what the, the purpose is behind this particular creature. Now... Esper's asked me to, to share and show you the, the page entry from his book um, on this particular um, creature. So I'm going to be doing that as I always try to do something like that so that uh, you get a, a better idea of 
what to expect from the um, the entry. Okay, so this is the garfish. Yeah, of course, you get the um, the artwork. I have not actually added that much um, additional material to the law. There is a little bit of an adjustment, and I've taken some creative license in some respects because when I looked at this um, garfish, I realised that it was essentially the moray eel in many respects. <clears throat> One of the things you'll notice is it's it's a very basic creature. It's an ambush creature. It's got a feature that allows it to do some ambushing. It's got a bite, and it's got a defensive maneuver. You don't usually see monsters with reactions. This monster does have a reaction, uh, not just its bite. Other than that, it's quite simple, and of course, even if you you pull it up and you're going fishing and you find you have one of these things on the other end, uh, it can survive outside of water for a while. And it literally doesn't breathe the, the, the air. It, it's breathing only water, only capable of doing that. Uh, instead, it simply holds its breath by holding its uh, <clears throat> its um, gills closed. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't actually have to breathe anymore. So it's not really, I mean, the mouth can be open, but it's still not breathing because the gills aren't going to be moving. They'll be closed off. Uh, and an hour, um, an hour is a long time, but two hours is a very long time. It's got an armor class of 15. It's got about 26 hit points, so it's not a huge threat. Its swim speed is where it's at. It's at 40 feet. And um, it's quite a strong and nimble creature. Okay, so that is the garfish for those of you who are interested. Okay, <clears throat> so today uh, we're going to be making a creature or monster as we normally do. And uh, we have a limited amount of time to get that done. So I'm going to be moving into that part of the live stream fairly shortly. Uh, I am going to show you the, the template that I'm going to be using. I'm also going to get rid of my hat. The reason being that I will overheat, I might even have to open the door of my office um, part way through, we'll see how that goes. And then we're going to do some, we're going to do a lot of dice rolling. I have a lot of tables and charts, we're going to use those tables and charts to actually build our creature and, uh, and see what we get at the other end. Now, it's not always going to be brilliant, um, I, I'm of the opinion that when we do this, this sort of stuff, on my channel that there are a couple of different things that can potentially happen. We either get something that's useless to us or something that's going to be really quite quite fun and, and very different to what we're used to. So um, always interested to see what we wind up at the other end. It's usually a bit of massaging required to get things to work right but uh, yeah um, uh, I'm still looking forward to the process and I hopefully you are too. You will need some dice, you'll need some 20 sided dice, you'll need some percentile dice or if you don't have any dice, you'll need to select numbers from the tables and charts that I put forward to, um, to you in a second. Okay, this is this is where is that? This is where you, as I check, keep an eye on the chat, will help create that monster. Now, the first thing we need to deal with is what type of monster are we making? So I put up a poll. There are only two votes. So if you are here, please um, consider voting so that we know which kind of creature we're making because that's really important. Right now it looks like we're making a marine creature, and I'm happy to do that, or subterranean. So the, 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 the vote is split. There's only two votes in. So I need, I need it to be broken. Somebody needs to press a button and vote on something. Hopefully YouTube is working correctly so that it will actually be possible. What I want to do, though, while I'm waiting for that to happen, is I'm going to show you the, the template that we'll be using. Uh, and then uh, show you some of the, the stuff that we'll use. We're going to do some artwork. We'll do some gem, some artificial intelligence generated art very quickly. So we'll get an idea of what it looks like as well. Okay, so this is the, the actual template here. It's, it's mostly empty. So we're going to be doing the monster name at some point, probably a little bit later on. Uh, we'll be dealing with its monster appearance. Uh, we'll be filling in some special abilities, monster traits, monster motivation, monster origins, uh, what sort of lair it has its reproduction cycle, what sort of food does it eat, what sort of senses does it have, the environment it's in, which to a large extent is answered by the lair, but we'll, we'll do it anyway, monster communication and monster society, if it has a society, it may not have one, uh, and then monster weaknesses, because all monsters should have some sort of weakness to make them stand out. Okay, and I'm going to be using this particular, this is still unfinished, this is basically a, a selection of tables uh, using the, the concept of AD&D, where with AD&D you would take different parts of an animal, combine them to make a new creature or monster. And that is the approach that I'm going to go with for today. This certainly gives us the, the beginnings of what it would look like. And then we deal with all the other stuff. There are lots and lots of tables to be um, rolled on. You'll need six-sided dice, 20-sided dice, percentile dice, 
or you'll need to select a number that you like the look of uh, as we're doing this, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys have decided on what you want and it is in in the uh, in the poll. We still haven't had a break on the poll, so I'm going to roll a dice uh, to determine what it's going to be. Since uh, we've only got two votes, we'll uh, we'll roll it off and see what it's going to be. So we've got marine and subterranean. So for marine, I'm going to roll one, two, or three. If it's a one, two, or three, it's going to be subterranean. Uh, it's going to be marine. If it's subterranean, it'll be a four, five, or a six. Okay, that's what we'll do. Okay. And I got a six, so it's going to be a subterranean creature for today, which is fine. <clears throat> I either go by the voting poll or we go by uh, my dice roll. And I guess it's my dice roll for today. Anyway, let's get back to where we were needing to go. So if we're going subterranean, we need to go up here. Uh, and I'll put it into this little section here. Let's just drop this over and bring this across. Okay, so environment, subterranean. That's not subterranean. Yeah, that's subterranean. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so now that we're dealing with subterranean, we have to build the body of our monster. What does it look like? So with subterranean underground, okay, we're going to go down to this table. We're going to be rolling three times. We need to do head body and limbs so those are the things we'll be rolling for so we've got head body and limbs already ready to go and so let's find the subterranean table uh, by the way this table was created with the help of patrons but also uh, with the advice of AJ Pickett for those of you who are wondering <clears throat> a lot of this um, stuff is very much inspired by a lot of discussions I've had with AJ and in fact, I send these monsters to AJ. As I said before, last time we did this, if the monster is good enough, if, mon if the monster is something that AJ really likes and we do a really good job, he will take the lore of that monster, turn it into a video, draw the art himself, and put it up as a video on his channel. That's the agreement, but so far we haven't got there. I've sent him 15 monsters, and he's been a bit busy. But So we're going to have a roll-off... Um, 1 to 50, just so so the easiest way to, to think about this is that, you know, I'm going to just double the number, okay? So essentially 50 would be 100, or 99 and 100, something like that, okay? Easiest easiest way to understand this. Hashtag uh, roll uh, percentile dice for monster. Okay, so we have a 70, an 84, and a 71, and a 64. Okay, <clears throat> so let's have a look at what the 70, half of 70 is 35, so we're doing, dealing with 35, with scorpion, a scorpion head. Well, that is very unusual, but we'll take our scorpion head, and we'll put that in as our head. And then the body you've rolled up is 84, which would be 42, so 42 is a tortoise body interesting tortoise body and next up would be its limbs and you've rolled a 71 which is essentially just the scorpion again being 71 it would be very very similar uh what would be 60 64 half of that would be 32 32 would be a platypus. Um, platypus, platypus, platypus. <clears throat> okay, so I think we've got a, a basic idea of what our, our thing is looking like. So we've got scorpion head, really it's a tortoise with a scorpion head. Really what we're talking about here, because you think about how a platypus's webbed feet, um, um, flippers, are very much like a tortoise. It's really a tortoise with a scorpion head. It's really easy to describe to the AI, so let's do that. Let's go over here, um, and I believe 
go to create uh, art <clears throat> and we'll put us to put here what do I want to do I want to go tortoise with a scorpion head uh, here we go so a tortoise with a scorpion head. Really, that's what we're dealing with. A little odd, a little strange. Let's see if we get anything that's worthwhile using. Um, one of the things that AJ did say to me too, he said, I would like the idea of just having creatures that aren't sort of crazy, 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 crazy. So even if it is not a crazy, crazy creature, there's just, there's still a possibility. So draw a tortoise with a scorpion head. So let's see what we get. Now we're going to use um, this real viz Excel, which I don't know that I've got good results from that so far, but we'll select that for today. Okay, so that's in the queue, and we'll go and we'll select a different one. Um, Style Vision X, I don't know that I like Style Vision X that much, but we will still do it. I've got plenty of credits, so we'll just do that. <clears throat> and is it doing it? Hopefully it is. Okay, let's pick another one. Anime is not going to work. Hydra might work, so we can pick Hydra as well. And click that as well. A stinger, any um, any bets? Possibly. I mean, I don't I don't have a problem with it having a stinger. If it, if they want to stick a, put a stinger on it, that'd be great. Wonderful. Photograph. I don't know that photograph is going to work very well. Um, let's try it. I haven't. I don't think I've used it. I don't think it's got a high success rate anyway. So let's do that. Uh, we've got a few coming through. Anime. Met, a and O, uh, Lyrax might work. Let's try that. And then uh, portrait won't work. Abstract world won't work. Cinematic, I doubt it. Fan, fantasy may. So we'll do the fantasy version. And we'll come back to these once they're ready to do their thing. Um, fantasy, ink, punk, no. Argo has been mostly useless, so it's no. I don't think there's any point in bothering. Sci-fi, no. Cyber. Punk, no. Argo 2 is also pretty rubbish. Flat, I don't think we'll do flat. Um, 3D art has sometimes given good results, so we'll do 3D art. And um, it looks like it's struggling to, to figure out what the, the instructions. It was pretty basic instructions. Okay, so 3D, I don't know that 3D is necessarily the way to go either. Um, do we do it? Let's try a detailed, detailed, detailed. Let's try the uh, the three D. I don't know if it's going to work either. And then next one, anime. Don't want that. Anime, anime, anime. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Magic, stylistic, realistic anime. No. Let's try the magic one. I don't know that that's going to work that well, but we'll give it a go. We've got a few. It's just drawing turtles. It doesn't know what the heck to do with this. High fantasy. Oh, I think the problem is with high fantasy, it's just going to put breasts on everything. That would be my guess. Um, we'll try that. And see if that works. And then... Are we just about done here? Magna, uh, magma, uh, watercolour. We could do a watercolour watercolor okay that's that we'll just leave that as is and we'll come back to this once it's finished doing its business okay let's go into the uh, the process of working on our our creature or monster <coughs> so our first task is our our special ability so let's get rid of the what is it going to look like and get rid of that bit and go to our special abilities. We have 100 different special abilities to, to select from. Okay, so we want something that it makes it stand out from every other creature or monster that we're making. So this is why we're using the 100 table. Uh, let me just punch in here. Hashtag 
uh, roll percentile dice for monster special ability abilities there we go okay so while you're rolling that <clears throat> I am going to just have a quick look through here and just see if there's anything that stands out for me. While you're doing that, I might actually just write this up as a description. The creature has the um, small head of a scorpion um, why am I having problems here scorpion scorpion on the end of a long tortoise tortoise neck with a large hard shell covering the body and flippers 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 um, flippers to walk Something like that. Something like that. There we go. Hello, Norok. How are you? We have Pale Rider. Pale Rider is in the house. 42. Um, so if you put a number in too soon before I've put in my prompt, uh, do exactly what Pale Rider's done. He did a 42 and he put it in a bit too soon. Just drop it down below so I can see where it is. Okay, so we're going to do special abilities now. Based off Fred Huber and uh, Norok is a patron. So is Fred Huber, by the way. So we're going to do traits last, uh, not last, but after this, let me just do with 85. What is 85? 85 tagging saliva allows for the creature to tag the target of the saliva. So, mm, okay, why would that be useful to you as a special ability? I'm not honestly too sure. I'm going to warn you now, if we wind up getting the option, if we get the curse thing, if the curse comes up again, I'm ditching it. The curse, cursed monsters suck. I was talking to um, AJ Pickett and Wally about cursed, trying to create cursed monsters, and they absolutely, the, they're such a pain in the ass to create. The fact that things like the vampire and the werewolf work, it is different. Limb replacement. Um, well, this is interesting. When a monster's limb is amputated, it, it has regrown in seconds. Now that's that's fine. But it doesn't, we haven't got anything roughly that, I mean, this is all interesting stuff, but it doesn't do anything else that's particularly special. That seems to be about the extent of it. I have no problems with the limb replace, replacement. I actually like the idea. Norok has rolled a 77. Let's have a look and see what 77 is going to be. Uh, spatial shift. The creature can teleport nearby creatures, uh, can teleport nearby creatures, it sees to locations it, it can see. This is interesting because now you can send a creature that you can see to a odd location, like very high up in the air. <laughs> I like this idea, splat. Um, or you can use it as a way of eliminating your th um, threats by just getting rid of them out of your space. I actually like that a lot. 23, 15, I think we've probably got enough going on here. If 23 and 15 look like they're, they're, they, they might work, then fine. Dislocated jaw can unlock jaw, opening up its mouth large enough to... Mm, I don't think so. 15, I think we've got enough. Charming, control mind, spore clouds, I don't think that fits. I think we're actually good where we are. I like the idea of what we've got so far. I'm actually fine with this. 
Although a lot of these things kind of feel like they're more like traits rather than special abilities, which is really odd. I thought I had, did I click on the traits section or did I click on something else? I'm kind of curious, you know, limb replacement. And um, the next one was 85, which was definitely, it was this tagging saliva. And the other one was 77, so that's, a spatial shift. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's get rid of the monster special abilities. Let's go to monster traits. Let me type that in. Hashtag. What will the monster traits be? We might not even need them given we've got a couple of, we've got one thing that's already a trait. Um, so roll, roll. percentile dice there are 100 different options so I'll let you do that uh, this table these all tables are all on patreon by the way people apart from the, um, the the monster body option okay but other than that everything else we've put up onto patreon at least is a first it's a first draft I wouldn't say they're finished drafts they're essentially great huge lists so yeah Come up with a number and we'll see what we get and see if it fits and uh, ditch the things that don't fit. I'm going to put here the tagging saliva. I really want to put this as a in yellow. I'm I'm not convinced. I, I like the idea of um, this creature having the ability to replace its limbs almost instantly. The problem is, is that means does it never is it never able to be killed? That's the problem. So I don't know if it's going to be regrowing a limb in seconds, but we'll, we'll see how we go with this. So you're going to roll up something for our traits, and I'm going to put it in. I'm going to take a quick break. Um, I've, been, I've been mentioning, I guess, in the community tab that I've been having some problems, and I continue to have some problems, but I am here today. So give me about less than five minutes. Put in your votes, and then we'll go from there, okay? Okay, let's have a look here. I can see the ideas are flowing, and and I told you I'd be quick, and I, I am quick, but I just needed to take a quick break, and I'm feeling a lot better now. Ha 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 ha. Okay, here we go. So let's w see what you guys have rolled up. Uh, you can only truly kill the monster by attacking the main body. That's not a dumb idea. That's actually pretty smart. 
Um, it kind of feels like the Hydra. You know how with the Hydra cutting off a limb, this doesn't work? It's it's really like the limb replacement, but you put it onto a different creature. It's actually really quite clever as a, as a concept. I like the idea of putting that on. Um, so I might just copy and paste that directly out of the chat. So pardon me while I do that now, because I will. And it looks like the votes came in a little bit late, but it's a bit too late because we started on the subterranean. Um, so killing the main body rather than the limbs. Limbs don't, don't mean very much to it, so cutting off limbs won't help very much. I'm fine with that as a, a possible um, addition. That's all good. So that... So what does the creature look like so far? Well, we're going to go, I'm going to show you in a second. It's basically a creature with regeneration. You're right. It's a tortoise creature with regeneration. It's got flippers. This thing's got flippers. Okay. And it's got a scorpion head. I'm going to show you the, the creature now. Like you've been waiting. Okay. I'm sure it's all processed by now. So let's go over and have a look. Okay. And um, and then I'll take down the, the, actually let's take down the traits first before I do that because otherwise I'm going to get sidetracked and we will we'll not get the things done that we need to get done. So you had to put marks down and you put down a couple of numbers. So let's have a look here. 54. Let's have a look at 54. This is traits. 54. Kangaroo black hole. No, we're not doing 54 again. Um, 35. Uh, I'm just I'm just not taking it down. Sorry. 35. Fake appearance. The, appearance. the creature appears as something else that is natural or manufactured. What's, what is it able to disguise itself as? I like this idea. I actually rather like that idea. That makes it um, a bit more interesting. So yes, maybe it can appear as a rock. I don't know. Maybe it can appear as a rock. You know, like a, uh, a roper can appear as something else, like a stalagmite or stalactite. And then 49, so Fred Huber's 54 I've dropped just because we had that last week, uh, last time we did this. Pale Rider got a 35. Norak rolled a 49, so what is the 49? 49 is incorporal. The creature has no physical existence and can pass through solid matter. Uh, I think we're going to stick with the, the fake appearance. I think that's good enough. So we'll ditch that. I'm going to be pretty ruthless today. Yeah, I think the fake the fake rock thing is the way to go. Uh, let's go and have a look at our creature and see if it has drawn it up sufficiently. A few things seem to be in queues, but we'll see if it's done it. Has it done everything? Okay, there's a few things that won't make any sense here. Let's just let's work our way through here. We've got the cartoon stuff. Um... Not what I was hoping for, honestly. I think it's just drawn a turtle, so kind of useless. And again, it's drawn a turtle. And we've got another turtle, very cute, but not what we were after. And yet another turtle, so complete waste of our time. Okay, so we'll, let's just remove this thing. I think we can delete. Delete all. I don't think there's anything that's worth keeping there. Let's delete those. They're gone. Well... It says it's gone, but it's not gone. Okay, so next next one, which looks like just more turtle pictures. No, that doesn't look like a, what we're after. That just looks like a turtle that's got legs in the wrong place. Yet another turtle looks like a... It's just a turtle. That's not it either. That's not what we're after. Okay. All right, yet another turtle. Well done. Um, not, not great. Not exactly what we're after at all. So let's go here and... I'll delete that one. Okay, let's see if this one has got any a better better representation. I find the AI art um, drawers don't really work very well. If you pay for this stuff, sometimes it can work better. Um, not really what we're doing with. I honestly, what is it trying to do there? Does that think? What does a scorpion head look like? Let's look like a. Let's have a look at a scorpion. What does a scorpion head look like? That's what a scorpion head looks like. It is not doing a scorpion head. I can guarantee it. That doesn't look like a scorpion head at all. Okay, next. Still no. No, not really. 
not not impressed okay so that's that's a ditchable one are we going to get anything out of this today let's try this one here uh close up doesn't really help us no that's just another turtle that's just another turtle it's just drawn a turtle okay it knows how to draw turtles let's figure that one out but uh it doesn't know how to create our creature so Makes me laugh when people say AI art is going to be the way of the future. I'm sure it depends on what you use. This is a mess. That is just another turtle. Yet another turtle, not a very good one, and yet another turtle. So we can turtle fire that one out the, out the door. Bye bye. You don't need that one. Let's try this. This is, I don't know what it was trying to do here. That there is no use to us. Uh, fantasy style no and no and it's put stingers on this thing I don't know what the heck is in the middle there but it ain't useful to us so again we're ditching it it's really struggling with the idea of putting a head on a turtle isn't it I mean I thought that would be quite simple instructions but I just deleted one of them I don't even have a look at it <laughs> I think the first one I saw was like God almighty, you gotta be kidding me. Really? Okay, all right. Let's just get rid of that one as well. Okay, what's this What's this doing? This is, <clears throat> I don't know what that's supposed to be. Magic, magic, magic. But not anything like what I was after. So again, complete waste of time. Okay, I think that's going to be a bust with this. I think this is just going to make a whole lot of um, chicks. Uh, whatever. 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 Okay, so it doesn't understand that one. Oh, what was that anyway? That was high fantasy. High fantasy, waste of time. Okay. <clears throat> Last option for today. Okay, so now it's got a... What looks like a kind of maybe a stinger or a one end or I don't know what the heck's going on here. Um, so there's something coming out of its backside and it's basically another turtle and again that doesn't make much sense either that there is like a combo snake turtle thingy and that is okay so I would say it's a big bust the AI does not know what to do in terms of drawing our creature okay head of a scorpion body of a turtle and some flippers like platypus flippers can't cope with that so we're going to just close that up today I don't think we need to worry too much about you anymore. Okay. And uh, see you later. You're gone. All right. Gone. Gone, 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 gone. Skynet. Skynet did not rule the world. Apparently not. Deranged turtles or scorpion heads. Well, yeah. A scorpion with a turtle shell. <clears throat> well, maybe... Maybe, but uh, yeah, it didn't. It didn't work. Um, so a turtle with a scorpion head, maybe a scorpion um, stinger, uh, possibly. Do you guys want to give look? Do you really want to put a um, a scorpion stinger on the end of this thing? I'm fine with doing that if you want to. <clears throat> um. It's got platypus legs, which means um, venom barbs on the, the back legs. Fake appearance. Um, could appear a floating patch of seaweed. Yes, seaweed. That's not, not a bad idea either, actually. Seaweed. Seaweed. Okay. <coughs> So that's, that's that one. And what else do you got here? <clears throat> uh, okay, so here's here's what we'll do. So you, you're going to let me know, do you want to put a stinger? Those of you who are actually interested in doing, doing this, do you want a stinger tail? I feel like every time we come to a creature, there's everything's going to have a stinger tail. Scorpion. So you let me know if you want it. I don't know that it necessarily needs that. 
two new ones. <laughs> All right, have a think about that. So we've got our traits. It can fake its appearance. It's got this limb replacement. I'm actually going to take limb replacement here and take it out of the special abilities because it's not something you're going to activate. It's something I, my general feeling is it's something that's just going to work. So I think it belongs here. Paste. <clears throat> and we'll put this here. Cut this, and drop this in here as well, under traits. I think that's where it lives. Uh, the, the tagging saliva thing, I think we ditch it. I don't think we need that at all. And the spatial shift is a little odd, um, but I'm, I'm fine with leaving it there for now. Let's keep going. Next thing, no. Stinger sounds good, I'm a scorpion after. <laughs> so we've got one yes, one no. All right, interesting. Okay, let's do monster motivations because we've done traits. We've got plenty of traits going on here. We've got 100 monster motivations. So let's go here, hashtag um, roll percentile dice for monster motivation <clears throat> so this is also on patreon uh, we do have 100 of them this is a first draft still all sorts of different things the idea behind the monster motivation is this is why why it does what it does like this is this is where it's at so it's going to be very hard we clearly got a creature that is more beast or creature than monster to be fair, my general feeling is that we've got something that is less monstrous and I wouldn't say that this creature seems to me like it's, I feel like it's more a, um, a, a creature that tries to survive whatever environment rather than it's necessarily got some sort of ulterior, um, you know, awful sort of motivation. I don't think it's doing that sort of thing. So that's something to bear in mind. I don't think it's necessarily a ha ha ha, I want to take over the world sort of creature. I think it's less than that. And something else. Okay, 36. Let's see what we get for 36. Will this fit? Exterminator. The creature is trying to um, clear invasive vegetation or pests. <clears throat> now maybe this would work. Is this a kind of creature that not necessarily trying to eliminate all life, but maybe it's uh, maybe it's 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 trying to get rid of a um, a deadly form of uh, seaweed, or maybe there's a type of seaweed that it feeds on and keeps the at the you know the population of that seaweed down. I don't know. Or maybe it's after a particular type of maybe it eats a particular type of creature in this um, well. Near the, I feel like if it's subterranean, I feel like it's almost like it's a beach, th beach thing. Because we've got seaweed, rocks, um, it's kind of got flippers. I almost feel like we're talking about sand and beach. So when it says subterranean, I think we're talking about uh, coastal, beach, and sand. Oops. And sand. I feel like this is something that lives in that sort of environment. Just from that. Is there something that would be like um, a problem in those locations? Have a think about that. A sea, sea elf paladin's mount. I suppose they could, but that's not specifically what it would be for, right? It's, I mean, just because you do that. 12. Confused. The monster doesn't understand its environment and purpose. Um, oopsie daisies undo that that was a bad thing to do let's try that again confused I'm not a fan of the confused number 12 probably doesn't feel like it fits very well we'll put it down for now but I feel like the uh, the first one's actually not too bad as, a, as an option okay next you have rolled so Fred Huber got 36, Pale Rider 12, Nora got a 23. What is 23? 
In total, the monster believes it can be be lazy and still get what it wants. Uh, does anybody get vibes off it that, that this is what it would be like? I don't see it myself. Okay, let's try the last one here. 91. 91. Remember, we have, we'll do fire, um, foods later on. 91. Technomancer. Can, what's its deal? And change the technology of others. I don't feel like this creature is a techno-like creature. I feel like it's it's definitely more beast-like. So we're going to not even put that down. Okay. Entitled leaves it lazy and at once. Uh, confused. <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of confused. I still like the top one more than I like the, the bottom one. And I would prefer not to have too many things going on here. Okay, all right. What have you written down? It would be, uh, don't like the confused. Yeah, I don't like the confused either. Its favorite food is the boulette. Um, 58. Uh, moral obligation. Nah, I think we're done with done with motivation. Uh, motivations. So let's just ditch the motivation. We're going to move on to the next one, which will be Monster Origin. I think that's the way to go. Hashtag. Um, roll. Now, what are we rolling for most monster motivations? It's a 20-sided dice for Monster Origins. Roll a d20 for... Come on, for for monster origin now we need to have a decent origin there are only 20 origins essentially that we came up with so this should hopefully be reasonably easy to do okay <clears throat> limb replacement regrows and see uh, when a monster's limb is amputated it regrows in seconds uh, the creature can only be kill, um, kill the creature. The creature can only be killed, killed by attacking the main body. I'm happy with that. Uh, disguise itself as rocks and seaweed. I'm fine with both of those as, as like, that, that, that works for me. I actually like that idea a lot. Um, they work fine. Entitled must be lazy and still get what it wants. I think what we are going to do is we're going to put we're going to actually give it a, the lazy. F it's its motivation is I wouldn't say it's necessarily entitled. I would say let's say it's lazy. The monster believes it it can be lazy and and waits for food to cross its path so it doesn't expend a lot of energy I actually think that works quite nicely exterminate the creature is trying to clear evasive vegetation or pests what those would be I don't know we need to come up with something that we think is an evasive pest you can get different types of growth or bloom on um, you know, or even vegetation near a coastal line. Maybe that, maybe it feeds on, it. Uh, it's trying to get rid of that sort of stuff. Maybe it, it eats those sorts of things. We'll come to diet at some point, so we'll deal with it later. We can come back to that later. That's fine. Okay, <clears throat> so we have rolled a 1, 14, and, and a 16. A 1, so 1 is accident. Unfortunate incident happens unintentionally creating a monster. Well, I'll copy it. It's not my favourite. The monster created by an accident is probably one of my least favourite ways for a monster origin to a, to be a, a thing. Not a great option. Um, got it down in Pale Rider though. Uh, Noroak has rolled a 14. What is 14? Science experiment. Again, not my favourite. Why do we always get these sodding things? Uh, they just seem to be ones that, that crop up every single time. So neither of these really say, yes, I love that. Humans are a very ev evasive pest. <laughs> um, I don't think we need to necessarily make humans the target. Tragedy. 
an event caused great suffering, destruction, and distress changes someone uh, or something. Someone or something. Mm, I don't know. Does anybody have an idea of what can be done with any of those? Because right now, for me, science experiment, tragedy, not my favorite thing, accident. I feel like there is, it, it, they are, all three are sort of tied together. But I've got nothing that sort of speaks to me and says, ah, that's the thing we need. Next, the accident. Yes, I think we next the accident. I don't think we need another accident. An accident created the monster. Again. <laughs> Science experiment. Not a huge fan of that. Tragedy. Now, tragedy could be great suffering, destruction. It might even be, look, it might even be a product of a change in the environment, right? Just destruction of the environment has, has resulted in this creature being, being a thing. Um, so maybe there's somewhere to go with that. Okay, we're going to put some question marks here. We definitely need to come back to this. Hello, Derp. Derp is a patron. Thank you for being here. We are, we are we're, we're chugging along to protect the baby sea turtles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I, it doesn't. Yeah, I will put it down, but I'm. It's not. I'm not a huge fan of that as, as an idea. Um, not a huge fan of that idea. Yeah, some sort of evolutionary change was forced upon it. Feels like it would be more more in line rather than it was created by magic it was an accident experimental scientific stuffy stuffies or um what's the other one um cre you know created by magic created by gods we get this all the time so yeah i i think there's there's more to be said for somewhere in that line there anyway i'm just dropping these ideas down into the into the document and we'll go back to this in a second um, let's get back to here. Okay, over here. Here we go. Let's have a look. So we're going to do the monster lair next. And I'm going to ditch Origins for now and close that up. And we'll have a think a bit more about that. Um, but monster lairs. There are, there are 26 of these little suckers. It's a god's little turtle. A nuclear meteorite made it. Oh, God. Of course. A nuclear meteorite. It's an accident. Another accident meteorite. Uh, here we go. Let's go here. Hashtag. Uh, roll. So um, roll a d20. Or roll a d20 plus a d6. For monster lair. Now we're going to have to be careful. Remember, this is subterranean. I feel like this is more coastline, beach, sand sort of environments that it would live in. So we need something that sort of sits in, in line with that. We have a bunch of different ideas here. Let's see what we wind up getting. Um, my general feeling is. The burrowing, you know, burrowing underground, tunnels would be probably work, caves would probably work. Um, uh, what else? A hollow tree, a hollow trees by um, by the coastline, maybe. Um, uh, what else? Uh, some sort of nest by that, and yeah, I don't know, sewers. Mm. Well, I suppose sewers underground. It's underground. It's subterranean. Sewers might work, but mm, again, I don't know if it's going in that vein. Even a volcano, a volcano, a rupture in the crust. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what year roll up. Seventeen. The moon, a, a large rock orbiting a planet made of dust. I don't know about this at all. Um, the moon. But Noroak and Fred Huber have both rolled 17. Did you roll that or did you select the moon?
are we dealing with something that is um, floating around in space on a moon? Which would mean that it's less sort of near the sea and it's definitely more subterranean, which means disguising itself as a rock is going to be more of a thing. You're going to be having to travel out of space. Uh, tragedy. A tribe that was um, overkilling the, th um, the fish and ignored the uh, gods' warns were turned into this monster. Uh, living on the coast of underground seas. They... 11. So you've rolled 11. Let's see what we get. I really don't want to bring it down on a meteorite. I really don't want to do that. It was a moon creature and fell to earth by meteorite and had to rapidly evolve to survive. Mm. You guys are going with this moon, moon creature falling from a meteorite thing a bit more. I rolled as well. Yes, I see. I'm just looking at... Yeah, you got a 17. So if, if we go with it's on a moon... I mean, moons can be... Can have other things. They don't have to just be like the Earth's moon, right? So it could be a moon that has some sort of liquid on it. Or vegetation. Or maybe it doesn't. So I guess that's not... Yeah, okay. That's not the end of the world. 11. Let's have a look and see what 11 is. What is its... A dungeon, a deep hole, stronghold, underground prison cells. Um, okay, all right. I'm not fond of that. I'm fine with the it's moon, the moon, underground on the moon. This here, I'm going to highlight in yellow. I don't know that this is the best idea. Uh, I feel like we've we've just created a a moon creature. Haven't we? We have mo we've created a moon creature. Okay, let's let's do some. Let, look, if it's going to be if its origin is the moon, let's forget about it. It landing somewhere on a um, on another planet or a, another body. Let's have it be on that moon. Okay, a devastating event. I think a devastating event, a devastating event on its moon forced the creature to rapidly, rapidly evolve, rapidly evolve. I think that's it. Let's get rid of this business here with that going on here. We've got the tragedy going on. So something, because, you know, you can have a moon have some sort of catastrophic occurrence. And for those of you who want to bring have it travel on a meteorite, let's, let's do what normally tends to happen to moons. They get hit by a meteorite. Um, a devastating event where a meteorite, instead of it being traveling on a meteorite, meteorite, uh, meteorite hit its moon Hit its moon, forcing the creature to rapidly evolve. I think that is it. It's had to evolve from whatever it was. I think that's what we want. Um, okay. So, underground. A deep hole. On a large rock orbiting a planet made of dust, dirt, rock, and gas. Gases. Okay. There we go. There's our lair. That's where we'll put it. I think that sort of answered it. Um, this is going to be. Ch this is going to change everything. This is going to have to be thought out a bit more. And limb replacement is fine. Fake appearance, it doesn't appear as seaweed because it's no, there's no sea anymore. There is no, no way for it. It's going to appear as a rock. Spatial shift. Now, spatial shift starts to make more sense as a special ability. Being able to teleport a creature 
to a different location. I actually think maybe we should allow it to teleport. The Treach can teleport itself, teleport itself, and nearby creatures it sees to locations it can see. Let's do that. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, all right, let's go down to reproduction. I'm, I'm now I'm feeling a lot better about this whole thing. Um, octopus are from space, not turtles. Yes, well, now we have a, a space or a moon scorpion turtle. Tortoise, tortoise, not a turtle. Turtles are in the sea, in water. 24. It doesn't need air because it's a creature of outer space. Yes. 24. Um, now, did I do that? What do you have here? 24. Tomb, repository. Nah, I think we're all good. I think the lair is sorted. I think we have established what its lair is. Now we need to know what horrible disaster. What did the moon go from being? Since that was its home. Okay, we're going to do monster reproduction next. Hashtag. Um, roll a d20. Or roll d20 plus a d4. To determine... The monster reproduction. Because that's what we're on next, reproduction. Yeah, I feel like Noroak is definitely coming together. Yeah, is that exactly. Dormant. Yeah, it has to be dormant. I, I think you're right. Dormant is very much a, a factor here. So let's write the word dormant. Um, uh, the creature. Um, the creature has to. It's not believes. Has to. Has to remain uh, dormant. And lazy lazy to conserve energy and waits for food to cross its path. I think this is definitely where we're heading. I like this a lot more. That works much better. Okay, so um, now that we are dealing with reproduction, we're starting to roll some numbers for reproduction, which is great. I'm going to grab a lozenger while I see the numbers. 23, 30, 15. Cool. <clears throat> this is working out much better than it did last, last time we did this. I don't know what it is about cursors. It's always difficult to make them work. They're always sort of pain. So let's see, 23. What is 23? Undead virus. The creature inflicts a victim that will transform into a... No, definitely not. Thank you for the pale, pale Rider for rolling 23, but I think that's not going to be the one we want. Three. What's three? Blood spawn. A completely new, unique creature grows from a drop of blood from, from a monster. Mm, I'm not sold on that idea either. 15. Random. The creature randomly pops into existence for no particular reason. <laughs> I prefer this out of all of them, but I'm not sold on that either. I feel like that's not, not the best reproductive method. I think we need a better reproductive method. I really don't think it fits the, mon um, the creature. So, But randomly popping into existence for no particular reason... <laughs> it's just weird what did you roll here we've got Pale Riders 23 we've got Norope 3 we've got Fred Huber's 15 Pale Rider you've got an 8 rolled let's see what 8 is imaginary the creature can spawn an offspring by envisioning it clearly in its mind um yeah 
maybe randomly randomly just pops into existence I'm really not too sure what to do this nine let's roll what's nine magic the magic casts but no no forget about that one I you reckon 15 again yeah I think 15 is the way to go I reckon it should be just randomly pop into existence it's just a weird sort of it's like a, a cosmic thing um what if the monster popped into existence every time a meteorite hit its its moon that that would be more interesting i actually like that idea because why would it be doing that it's to ensure its um, survival another one just pops into existence it's sort of like um it's almost like it wills another creature into existence every time there's a potential for the uh the falling meteorite to wipe it out pop there's another one <laughs> just in case you've rolled 17 17 for reproduction seed sprout when a seed is planted it grows in the creature there's really nothing to seed it in that's the problem i actually like the idea let's let's go with the random idea when the creature when when a, someone makes a wish the monster creates a new spawns a new uh i wish the creature let's go with a new creature a new creature randomly pops into existence every time it believes believes a meteorite might <laughs> might hit and kill it <laughs> it's, it's a really strange way to have a spawning progress um, process but it's definitely different um, the daddy monster puts his daddy oh good lord I don't know if you guys can come up with something that's better I still like the random idea they just need to trigger because random's not really that random this this is I mean this is random it could be completely random it just pops into existence for no particular reason but I like the idea that if you know it's it, it's uh, its system sort of goes into into shock and it realizes there's more meteorites smacking into its its moon it suddenly goes oh and poop out pops a new creature or pops into existence somewhere else away from where it is you know, uh, randomly pops into existence um, and hit it uh, some distance away Uh, I don't know. It, it's a little odd. I know. I get it. Let's do food. What the heck does this thing eat? So we've got forty. Let's uh, let's ta let's tap in some some uh, stuff there. Let's roll two d twenty for the monster diet. It's got to eat something, right? So what the heck is that diet going to be? So all consuming, it's going to have to be something that kind of fits with what we've got. We do have 40. If you roll two um, D20, you're going to wind up, we're not going to wind up getting number one, which is all consuming. The monster eats everything in the world. I don't really want that to be number one anyway. So I'm quite happy to see number one off the cards because eats everything in the world is is like really right derp has rolled a 12 dark devourer the monster consumes normal and magical darkness i like that it's weird it's strange it's got nothing else to really eat i kind of feel like that actually makes sense it would have to feed on something like that wouldn't it 
Maybe. Maybe that works. Um, 39. What did you get for 39? 39 came out as a um, story starved. The creature gains energy from hearing and learning new stories. I really don't think that makes any sense whatsoever. I think we're going to leave that alone. Pale Rider. Um, Derps 12, 39. I'm going to leave that one. At some point when the um, species is threatened, they might summon a meteor, meteor swarm just to grow their numbers again. I suppose they could. Um, so we've got a 29. I don't want to put story starved. 29. Let's go with 29. Organ feeder. The monster only eats on specific internal animal organs. I don't think that's going to make any sense either. I really like the darkness because that's it's gotten really nothing else to eat. 18. What's 18? Fear muncher. The monster absorbs another creature's fear for energy. I am inclined to think that I, I like the first one more. Does that mess with some of our stuff that we're trying to do here? Next, the story thing off the main list. Yeah, well, I'm going to use it someday, but not for this monster. It's funny, every time you say it's weird, strange, it's usually one of my suggestions. Oh, Noro. <laughs> it's because, Noro, every idea you put forward is strange and weird. But um, I'm not I'm not ditching all your ideas. Trust me, it's, a, it, it's not necessarily the case at all. Um, you take it a compliment every single. Well, that's good. That's nice to know. I mean, you guys have sold me on the meteorite thing. It's just I don't want it to be traveling on a meteorite to another planet. I think the meteorite needs to have devastated its environment and um, make it more of a thing. I really like the first one, Dark Devourer. Does that change some of our other stuff? Absolutely. Um, but I don't think I don't feel like in a way that it really matters too much. If anything, I feel like it's a creature that sort of hides itself from the outside world. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. I'm thinking about now. Let's do. Let's do the next one. Let's let's um let's deal with uh we've we've rolled some dice. We've got some numbers. Let's deal with uh, the monster senses. I'm going to need a couple of different senses, things to deal with, so uh, what are we doing? We're rolling, roll 2, d20 for monster senses. So we, we are going to need a few different monster senses. There's 40 here. We're going to lose alignment detection. The monster can sense the um, attitudes and inclinations of another creature regardless of their current action. I'm quite la I'm glad that we'll be losing alignment detection because I'm not sure that I think this creature needs that sort of thing. It's, it's the wrong sort of thing for what we're trying to go with so far. Uh, so let's see what you guys roll up. Interesting to see. Uh, there's lots of different types of vision and senses here. We've got heaps and heaps and heaps. So Norok's got a 34. Undead sense. The creature can detect the necrotic or evil soul possessing a corpse or skeleton. Mm. You know, I'm going to um, take this, that you've rolled up this, and you know what I'm going to do? <clears throat> I think we're going to turn this into something else. And we're going to twist it a little bit. 16. What did you get for 16? Kind of curious. 16 came out as memory taste. Memory taste? Mm, okay. Memory taste. I don't know that that would... Keep rolling, people. We might need to do this a few times. Uh... 
And then after memory taste, we got 16 from Fred Hoover. Nora got a 34. 17. Microvision. The creature can see extremely small things. I guess the question is, why would it need to have that? And then Pale Rider has rolled up as something as well. When it imagines the reproduction, it creates a hard rock egg that can survive entering another planet's atmosphere. Oh, I don't. I really don't want to shoot its um its eggs into another planet's atmosphere. I really don't. So twenty four. Okay, let's have a look at twenty four. Portal sense can sense the location of dimensional portals or breaches in space and time. You know, this is actually not a bad idea. This, in a combination of the undead and a bit of a twist, I actually think might work. Because I'm trying to think of what sort of things does it need to be able to sense to survive? Because that's what, this is the whole point. It had to obviously alter it the way it operates quite a lot. 20. Meteor sense, it knows. Noroak, you're right on the money. There you go. We, we need, we need to, it needs to know when there's going to be another meteorite strike. Absolutely. This is what it needs to be. I was wondering if anybody would catch on to what I was going, where I was going with this. Neural oscillation that can detect the brain waves and rhythmic or repetitive patterns of neural activity in the central nervous system of other creatures. So let's do this. I think... I think Noroak is right on the money today. I think that's exactly what it is. A combination of the undead, the portal sense. Um, and I'm just wondering, do we have anything that's sort of like that? No. 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 It's kind of like gravity, isn't it? Not electromagnetic fields, but gravity. Okay, let's 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 make some modifications to this. Um, I don't think it needs any sight. I think it's blind. I think if it's underground, it's probably mostly blind. Um, and those when we try stretch will strike. So gravity sense. The monster can sense the location of dimensional portals of meteorites, comets, dimensional portals, or breaches in time and space. Let's take that one. Let's get rid of the memory taste. I don't think it needs that. Undead sense. It's kind of got that going. Let's get rid of this. Um, I don't think it needs this. I just don't see why would it have micro vision. You can see in a high... Highlight environments, A.K. sunglass turtles. <laughs> uh, making the list, you said it was um, basically a dog. It's basically a dog. That's right. Dogs do this all the time. They sense uh, meteorites, comets, dimensional portals, breaches in space and time, um, all the time. Like your your dog does this constantly. I think that. Is probably. Let's give it tremor sense. I know, I know, we didn't roll up tremor sense, but I actually let's. It's underground. Let's give it tremor sense. 
Is, do we have a tremor sense? Tactile, taste, telepathy, dimensional. Vibration. Solid matter, copy. Let's do that one. Let's add that to there. And then it's got this other thing going on here, which is really more about survival. And I don't think it needs this. It's going to have to survive on pretty much nothing um, like flesh and so forth. So I, I reckon, I reckon we, we get, get rid of this. I don't think we need the fear muncher thingy. I actually like the idea it just feeds on darkness. Magical or not magical. It feeds on that. That's really quite cool, you know, when you think about it and how that's going to work. That's it's, that's actually quite nifty. Um, let me just do this as a italic. Uh, that's 11, so we've got all of our... Have I, have I messed up my um, my sizes? 11, aerial, aerial, not... Okay, all right. Am I running out of time? I am. I need to get on to the next thing. And so we need to keep moving, don't we? Um, okay, communication, society, and weakness. I don't think, it, well, they might have a society. You never know. So we've got senses. Let's just leave that alone. Let's do the next one. Or the absence of it. I, I actually think you're quite right. It cracks its teeth to use echolocation. <laughs> I like, she'll like that a lot. Um, hashtag uh, roll two. Uh, roll 2d20 to determine the monster communication. Okay. It cracks its teeth to use... Um, maybe... Cracks its teeth. Um, 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 I'm just thinking about that now. I suppose it could. In high light environments. UV sight. Detecting light. I think you're probably correct. Light and UV, UV radiation. I think UV, yeah. Let's let's do that. Let's uh, let's include those two. Um, so I think we're going to have to include them. Uh, radiation. Creature. Um, um, feels ultra violet, ultra violet. And normal light. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, I think I've got that sorted out. We're doing our communication roles. And I, th yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely, yeah, well, let's, thing is I feel like it this, is this creature quite large or is it quite small we really haven't determined how big this thing is have we we really haven't decided how large is this thing going to be is it small is it medium is it large is it huge what sort of size are we dealing with here okay 
All right, back to um, back to here. Um, I'm going to put this here as a underline, and we're going to come back to this later. Right. So communication. So communication. We got 40 of them, and we've rolled up a few numbers. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, 27. What is 27? Poetry. The creatures' language consists entirely of rhythmic couplets. <laughs> Not really sold on that one. <laughs> um, we'll uh, we'll mark that down. It's a it's an odd odd one that for sure. I'd give it telepathy communication to top off the space um, space theme. Actually, that's not a dumb idea. It, I think you're right. I think it probably needs to communicate telepathically. And I, we've probably got a telepathy telepathy um, option here. Even if we haven't rolled 37, let's just put down telepathy as potentially an option. The problem, the more we, the more we build out our monster, you may may have noticed this happens to us every single time. The more we build out the monster, the more we roll, the rolls don't work. Do, do, do has people have people noticed this? I notice it every time we do this. Uh, it it's like we're trying to shove a square peg into a round hole, and the hole is getting rounder and rounder, and so the square peg just will not fit. Singing, the creature uses its voice to form whistling, twittering, and tunes that make melodious sounds to convey information. The problem is that there's probably nothing to actually allow the sound to travel in. So singing may be a problem. Let's keep going. What else do we have here? Um, 31, 15, 27, 31, and then... Dog sized, size of a cat, medium to small. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, well, what we else I do moon other than a recite poetry to stave off the boredom? <laughs> eighteen. What is eighteen? Photography. The cream commits by displaying different flowers. There are no flowers. There are no flowers left. So the flowers one is probably not going to work. Um, we could include the poetry and the telepathy or we could include the, tele um, the telepathy and the singing that would be quite fun we could include that it communicates telepathically using poetry and singing singing poetry singing poetry <laughs> Creature. Uh, to its own species. Um, by singing and uh Rhythmic couplets. We just included all three. I think that's hilarious. I think we keep that. Singing, singing poetry telepathically. Fury size, space tools is, is my size vote. <laughs> Gigantic, the size of a supercarrier. Uh, communication. Nazak. Rubs big big lines in the meteor or planet. It's a it's a it's a it's a telepathic rapper. <laughs> it's, a, it's essentially what we've created is a telepathic rapper. Oh my gosh. I think. <laughs> uh, that is that is hilarious i'm keeping it though um let's get rid of the communication stuff and let's go to the society because we need to do society we're running out of time and i need to start doing the next thing hashtag 
Um, roll a d20. Or roll a d20 plus a d4 to determine monster society. Bum bum bum. Beat boxer for the win. Yeah, I, I really I really like the idea that it telepathically sings rhythms or poetry to you. I think that's absolutely nuts. It's very alien, it's very strange. I love it. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm I got a distinct feeling that AJ will like that as a as a concept. Um it's just so weird. 21, 21, oh, 21 is getting a lot of, lot of action. 21 is Republic. The, the monster forms, form of government is ruled by re representatives of the population. A rep we're turning it into a Republic. Is there anybody else rolling anything today? Is that what we've got to work with? Just 21. 21 for the win? I don't know how that's supposed to, I don't know how I'm supposed to do that. Um, but that's a that's a strange combination. Um, communicates by impacting the ground, causing seismic disturbances. That's not bad either. That's not bad either. That would work if you were. That would you'd have to be big. You'd have to be quite a large size. And the, look, the only reason you probably need to concern yourself about meteorites, I suppose, because larger creatures, no, large cre it's harder for large creatures to survive than smaller creatures, isn't it? Particularly with uh, meteor, meteor impact, but then of course you're going to randomly generate another one of yourself. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting. Um, 18, what is 18? Let's have a look at 18. Oligarchy, the former individuals or family tribe, so it's tribal. I don't know. We're going to drop in a few of these and see where we go with this. And there. I don't know. I'm not too sure about any of those. Um, I did two 12s. Oh, did you? Um, society 11 by 11, 11, what's 11? Hybrid society mixture, mixing two or more of, oh I see, you want to hybrid it. Okay, which means you guys are going to give me an idea of what is a hybrid of a republic and an oligarchy. Wow. Um, 12, what is 12? Theocracy, uh, monster society is run by, by or made up of idiots. <laughs> it could well be. Um, 15, okay. I'm not a fan of this one. Um, I'm not going to put it down. A monster society in which individuals are chosen and moved to position. 15, 16, okay. I really... Not too sure. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just copy a whole bunch of these in here, and then I'm just gonna go through it later on and figure out what to do with this because it, it's such an odd creature right now that um, it's really a bit hard to understand what with monarchy, kings and queens. I don't know about any of these. Okay, eight. What did eight come up as? Eight. 16, 8. Monster government focuses on problem solving, creative intelligence. The smartest individuals become leaders. Mm, okay. All right. There's a bunch of them here. I think we move on to the next thing because we've got to do the monster stat block and I'm going to run out of time. Uh, so next, next thing is our monster weakness. Monster weaknesses, we have 100 of the sodding things. Hashtag. 
roll percentile dice for monster weakness. Okay, all right. Moon gulls. What heck? Moon, why would we call it a moon gull? I'll put the name down. Yes, names are appreciated at this present time. We are moving into the how do we name this thing. I don't know what we're going to call it, why we call it a moon gull. Uh, okay, so we're rolling on the percentile dice now. And how do we do? We've got a 53. Numbers are coming through. 53. Injured. The monster has some wound that inconveniences it. Well, that's a very sort of temporary problem. So even though if we put it down, that's not necessarily something that we can carry over. So I don't know that I, it's going to be a, a favorite in terms of a, a weakness. Uh, 31. What is 31? 31 is Flapper. The monster has huge ears that flap in the wind. No, it doesn't. Uh, 15. Cold-blooded. The monster's activity is restricted to warm clients and vulnerable to the cold. Again, that that may or may not work. I, I, the problem is that I feel like its environment is already really cold. So um, there's a good b bigger, a bit of a question mark on sticking this creature in a cold environment when it's probably already dealing with a lot of cold. 15. 87. What is 87? Sonic vulnerability. The monster is easily deafened by loud noise. I like that one, actually. Norok, I think that is um, my favourite out of all of them. I like that more. I think the injured thing we'll get rid of. I think we'll get rid of the injured thing, because I don't think it's going to work. Not as an ongoing thing that's specific to the monster. And then 93, fr 93 true name, true name of the monster is known, it can be forcibly controlled. I'm not fond of that either. Meteorotic um, Turtleloo. <laughs> oh, here we go, names, 42, 42. All right, give me some names, people. Give us some names. And 42, um, gas breather. The monster breathes a different type of gas than oxygen. It probably does. It probably does. It would have to breathe something else. But I still like the the sonic vulnerability more than anything else. It makes sense. Okay, so let's I'm gonna get rid of cold blooded. I don't think it is. It's gonna to have to live in a cold environment. Gas breather. We might just leave that for now, because uh, I, I kind of feel like it could feed into it's. It's obviously going to breathe something other than. What's the other thing in the in the galaxy that there's a lot of, even in space, that isn't oxygen? There's got to be something else that's floating around in there that it, maybe it can can deal with. Okay, let's. Uh, forty-two, ninety-three, forty-two. What do we got here? Forty-two, uh, thirty-eight. Foaming mucus, mucus blisters and dissolves when exposed to sodium. Uh, mm. Nah, let's leave that. I, I actually think we, we're all good. I think we're good. So stationary. If the creature in food doesn't um, cross its path, it starves to death. Absolutely stationary. That that that's definitely going to be a problem. It's uh, but then it, its food is darkness. So I I I feel like it's had to adapt to that. So it does have food. It stays very still, but it's still feeding on darkness. Or is it feeding on something else? Mmm, mmm. Make it vulnerable to salt water. You want to make it vulnerable to salt water. Is that where we're going with this? That's why you wanted that one. That's why you picked it. Foaming mucus. Exposed to salt water. To salt. Basically, you want to you want to, to, to react to salt or sodium. Salt, so when I mean, they're basically the same, right? Or sodium. 
Okay, let's get rid of the, the, the oxygen breathing thing. And let's just put this here. I, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's, that's good. All right, cool. All right, so names. And then I'm going to start doing a stat block really, really, really quick. Okay, let's have a look here. Um, let's just do a quick whip it over here. Flick in some things uh, and ask you a question. All right, so I'm going to just do a copy paste, quick copy paste, drop stuff in. Meteorite Tutelu, Astral Barnacle. The Astral Barnacle. Really? Uh, so, hashtag. What is the creature's name? Okay, do not say Bob. <laughs> if you put Bob, I'm leaving it off. The Astral Barnacle. An Astral Barnacle? It is kind of like, I suppose it is kind of like an Astral Barnacle to a certain degree, isn't it? Um, make it vulnerable to water instead of salt. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, now I'm starting to understand where you're going with this. Um, to water. And... Yeah, okay, so I'll think about how to change that name. That'll work later. And let's have a look here. Um, the astral bl 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 blimey. It's a different name. Let's grab this. And I'm I'm going to have to ask you another question very quickly, and, uh, and then I'm going to start plugging in some information. I'm not going to explain myself. I'm just going to just do it because we won't have time otherwise. Feed on anything not touched by light. Um, hello, darkness, my friend. I've come to consume you again. Yes, exactly. Scopius. The Scopius. Bill. Yeah. Bill got knocked off the list real fast. That Well done. <laughs> Bill is not going to be a name I'll put down. The Turtleblin. Tur Turtleblin? Good Lord, there's a few of these names here. And uh, Scorptil, Scorptil, Scorptilly, Scorptilly, a Scorptilly. Okay. Scorptilly, as in Scorp Reptile, is that what we're trying to go, go with? Scorptilly, um, Living Mountain. Oh, I see where you're trying to go with this. You still want it to be quite large, don't you? Um, the lunar loony. Lunar loony. <laughs> lunar loony. Good lord. Okay, how much time have I got? I have almost no time. The moon lice. Moon lice. Actually, I like the idea of moon lice a lot. Lunar lice, actually, even better. Lunar lice. Nice job there, Pale Rider. Moon tears. Okay, we, we've. Okay, this is this is where we need to move on to. What's the challenge rating? Hashtag. What is the challenge rating? For the monster because then we're gonna plug in some stuff okay I'll I'll note down your names and you will tell me what we were doing next because I want I want a I want a creature the meteoric spawn actually that's not bad either you guys have got a lot of names here 
uh, moon tears. My general feeling is this thing is is probably quite tough, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, you, you guys can decide how you want to call it. Call it what number you want, man. Give me a number. If we're playing D and D five E, for those of you who know D and D five E, give me a target number to to plug into this thing, and that's what I'll work with. Okay. And I need to have it fairly quick, otherwise we run out of time and I can't do it. So far, Nora, I can see it as 16. Anybody got something else they would like to suggest? Now is the time. Um, if it's going to be quite big, then 16 is fine. Okay, it's something that you probably wouldn't encounter unless 16 or 80. I don't know about 80. Challenge rating 80 ain't going to happen. Thirty-seven. It doesn't even go to thirty. Do you know what I mean? How do you how do you deal with that? A low dexterity of the thing is just a lumbering pile of rock, so it can only really move. Uh, uh, can't really move well. No, it would move very slowly. Um, That's if it's really, really big. <laughs> I want you to give me a, a number that's sort of reasonable. Reasonable numbers, people. Reasonable numbers. Expert book rating. 23. 23. 23 would mean it would have an armor class of about 19, which is pretty s solid. 23. 16 would be about an 18. Okay, let's let's go with twenty three. I'm I'm fine with twenty three. Let's do twenty three. This is our stat block. So I'm not going to explain a huge amount, but I will at least see, show you what I'm going to do with this. Okay, I have no idea what the hell we're supposed to call this thing right now. So I'm going to just come up with a name from your suggestions and uh, and just plop it, plop it in. And go from there. Um, let's make it really large. Yep, fine. We'll make it. We'll make it large. Um, large to colossal. size okay 25 you reckon 25 25 23 okay well i reckon we'll just go with 23 let's make it a 23 i don't think we need to go too much let's give it a um i don't know what to call it i really don't know what to call it Luna Lice. Copy. I'm going to call it Luna Lice for now. I don't know what else to call it, so. Luna Lice. And um, Luna Lice. This will be the large. This is a monstrosity. Oh, it's a beast, isn't it? Monstrosity, mon. It's a monstrosity, unaligned. Okay, so challenge rating time. Uh, so Noroak is giving me some stats for this. That's fine. You put those numbers in, and I'll go from there. Let's put in our basic in information. If I'm looking at the Dungeon Master Guide 274, with limited time to figure out how to put it all together. And we're going with a challenge rating of about 23. So in other words, it's quite big. Go here, question mark, uh, challenge rating 23. How many experience points it's worth is really important right now. Uh, 23 and so our proficiency bonus should be a seven. Okay, that's fine. And then uh, moving along, 23. Armor class, we're gonna push to 19. 
I'm tempted to go 19 to 20 actually. Bracket 20. We can move it one mark and it would still be fine. Natural armor, just because of the shell. It's got a shell that's probably highly protective, so we can go there. Uh, next, 23. How many hit points are we dealing with here? Well, um, I'm going to say... It's a lot of hit points on a monster like this. This is a problem. Let's just do this. Uh, 491. 491. To five three five five three five. Okay, come back to you. Bold. No, speed. Don't have a speed for it, but I'm going to say it's probably about it's just its sheer size is going to suggest that it's going to be. It's actually slow because it's large but slow. Um, What else are we doing here? 23, uh, we need to have its attack bonus. So we've got to find something that deals with attack. Hive mind, we're not dealing with that low. Protect the hive, no, no, no. Worker bees, let's get rid of this. Um, and let's go with, we need a an attack. And I'm out of time already, which is just painful. But let's just go down. And um, let's grab something here. Rolls monsters. Uh, dragon. Turtle. we go grab dragon turtle uh, let's grab all of that copy dump that in there real fast where is it and okay and line Yeah, that's that. Let's go here. Let's get rid of this. And uh, its attack should for twenty three should be sitting at about eleven. Now is that correct? Twenty three. You're facing this at level 20. So at level 20, your 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 basic modifier is going to be a plus 5. Then your proficiency bonus on top of that for making attacks, generally. That's what you're looking at. 5, 6, 11. Yep, that's about right. That's r roughly where you would be. You're probably going to have magic items, so it's going to be a little bit different. But yeah, that's all right. That's fine. Um, that'll be high enough a number to, to do something and then of course all this stuff here doesn't really make too much sense We'll come back to you uh, Next 23 now amount of damage per round uh, Damage Per round I don't have time to do the air attacks and how it would look so I'm going to just make a, a quick note of where it should be 177 to 194 this would be on average, so average damage, bold and highlight for later, and um, belly flop drops, <laughs> speed 5 feet, I don't know about 5 feet, but uh, 20 feet is probably fine. Uh, next, 23, and then it's saving throw, if it's got a saving throw of any kind, sunbeam, not really appropriate, but if it had it, anything a 20, is that correct? 5, 8, 6. So 5 for your modifier, 6 for your proficiency, 
uh, what's, is it actually seven, seven, six, 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 seven, six, seven, something like, something like that. I think it's seven. Um, so that's 11. And then it'll be fine. Yep. We'll make it 20. That's fine. Uh, and I am out of time. Um, all the rest of the other information I have to deal with later on. Uh, Nor Oak has given me Moonbeam, Moonbeam, Sunbeam, Moonbeam. Good point. Moonbeam. And we have to, of course, change all the damage output for all of this. Bonus actions, ditch them. Bonus actions are a bad thing. Reactions are a bad thing. And absolutely do not want to do anything with legendary actions um, at this point. So I'm going to just leave this as a highlighted. I don't know about that. Uh, now, stats. 30. 30 is a... Well, what is the 30? I can't remember what the modifier is. I'll deal with that later. 30 dex 5. I think dex 5 is really bad, mate. I think that's that's getting a bit too silly. Um, that would affect everything too much. So we'll go 10. It's average. Um, con, 24. Sure. Um, int, 18. Why int 18? You've made it really smart. I'm not against the idea. Uh, wisdom, 14. And Charisma 18. Why Charisma 18? There's something going on here that I don't know about. Isn't there? And that is a plus 2. That is a plus 4. And that is not going to be correct. I'll deal with that some of the time. Okay. Cool. And the rest I have to deal with later on. Because there's just no... There's definitely no time to do the rest of it. Okay. So that's the rough... Rough pull it together <sighs> never enough time to do the stat block but honestly it's really the monster law that's more important if you ask me I think we've got most of what we needed there's a few things that need tidying up I'm not entirely sure how to deal with all of them just yet but I'm sure I will I'm going to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been in the chat today thank you very much for taking part um, epic actions is not a stupid idea I actually think that's a really good idea epic actions even calling them legendary actions it's one or the other it's not a it's not a bad idea at all um, if we're going to make it this size it probably will be showing up on its own I feel like we've just made another legendary creature we do do a lot of these apparently <laughs> we'll see how we go anyway thank you to everybody who is watching and listening today Thank you to all of my patrons. Thank you to Esper the Bard for uh, allowing me to use his uh, monsters from Esper's Emporium of Esoterica. Really huge thank you for taking part in the poll. I really do a hel um, helps uh, to get things moving, even though we kind of got the votes in a little bit late. I want to thank everybody in the chat who's been sharing their ideas and their suggestions. I really feel like the law for this is much better than it was before uh, when we did this with the... the I guess we call it Damn Dancer or whatever the heck it was. It was a bit of a mess, that monster. This one's worked out a lot better. I still still need some tidying, but I'll get there. Um, so huge thank you to everybody. Noroak, Fred Huber, um, Derp, Pale Rider. Uh, if I've missed anybody, I was not planning to, but those things seem to be the, the main contributors for today. Without your assistance and your feedback, this just wouldn't be possible. So really do thank you for doing so and um, hanging out with us. And we'll do this again. Same same day, same back channel, same, same time next week. We'll be back and try and do it all over again. Make another monster, see what we come up with and see if there's anything interesting that can, that can come from it. Anyway, no matter where you are in the world, whether it be um, the morning or the afternoon, please look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your uh, neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Switch wisdom and intelligence. Okay, got it.